Hello everyone, uh, my name is Tony Kingham, I'm editor of Border Security Report magazine and today I'm talking to Alberto Ariane Varela. He is the coordinator of the UN ODC Container Control Program for Latin America and the Caribbean regions. Hello Alberto. Hello Tony, good morning for, for, for me here in uh, Santo Domingo, nice to see you. Nice to see uh, you. As you told, uh, my name is Alberto Arián Varela, I'm a former uh, Guardia Civil police officer in Spain, always uh, dedicated to uh, counter narcotics operations and organized crime. Uh, since September 2020, I'm the regional coordinator for the Caribbean of the UNODC WCO Container Control Program, uh, based in Santo Domingo, from where I coordinate uh, our activities in the, in the whole Caribbean. Okay, fantastic. This is a, a uh, follow-up to a, uh, an interview that we did with uh, Bob van der Berg of the UNODC about this time last year. Um, and um, Alberto, first of all, can you outline some of the, 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 the issues and the scale of the problem in terms of drug trafficking in the Caribbean? Yeah, well, definitely it's, it's well known the Caribbean uh, is uh, the main platform uh, for ship trans ship for trans shipments and shipments of large amounts of, of, of cocaine uh, towards the United States and towards Europe from uh, from South America from the producing countries. Uh, for that reason, uh, since around 2012, uh, we could start implementing the first container, uh, the port control units in the Caribbean. Uh, we started in Jamaica and Guyana and Suriname. 2013, we incorporated the Dominican Republic. It was a key factor because it's it's one of the the hotspots now. Well, since then and now also of of transshipments of uh, large amounts of drugs. Uh, the program uh, in the Caribbean since 2012 has been growing continuously. We started with. Uh, three port control units. Uh, port control units are multi-agency units that operate within the ports. Uh, we always look for multi-agency uh, units. Normally, not, not, it, will, it will depend a little bit on, on, on the law enforcement agencies that operate in each country, but uh, may, mainly it, it, it's always includes customs, police, anti-narcotics police, uh, port, port authorities. And uh, what they do is they profile and uh, task high-risk containers. Uh, so in the Dominican Republic, we started with two units in the port of Jaina and the port of Calcedo. Calcedo is one of the bigger transshipment port in the, in the, in the region. And uh, since 2020, we started working on extend, extending the, the program in the, in the country. So we created two new more port control units, one in Puerto Plata. On the north coast and one in Manzanillo also on the north coast. Manzanillo is a port that's in expansion and we also had a strategic view because that's I think that's one of the, the key factors of UNODC. We, we try always to look uh, ahead. Uh, we built also a container control unit on the land border of Dominican Republic and Haiti where we are operating we are, where we are operating since February this year and with uh, some significant successes already. Uh, so that's for the, let's say, the, the part of the Dominican Republic. Uh, Jamaica, we are working in the port of Kingston and also in the port of Montego Bay. We starting to, we are trying to re-energize the, the units. So we are working close hand in hand with uh, Jamaican authorities. We're working on a new MOU. Uh, we are training with more people. We are also looking at to facilitate some equipment. The same in Guyana, the same in Suriname. And also we are hopefully before the end of this year, uh, covering with two port control units, Bahamas. Bahamas, uh, we should have incorporated them in 2021, 2020, but COVID-19 stopped us from doing physical uh, activities. And uh, well, since short, we are again on track. And uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, we can uh, have two units operating, uh, one in the port of Nassau, and definitely the most important one, uh, one in the port of Freeport, 
in Grand Bahama. Freeport is the, the biggest uh, port looking at uh, t uh, TU uh, movements in the Caribbean. And it's the main entry to the Caribbean to watch Europe and to watch the United States and to watch North America. So, so for, for us, it's a, it will be a key factor to, to, to have the port of uh, Freeport covered with the port control unit. Uh, I'm working closely with uh, Bahamian authorities, with customs, with the Ministry of, uh, uh, Ministry of National Security, with the police, with the Drug Enforcement Unit. And uh, I think we, uh, we will have that before of the end of the year, uh, both units operating. So with that scope uh, of activity in the Caribbean, uh, we can say more or less that we have covered the bigger islands and the bigger ports in the Caribbean or will be covered and will be attended by the container control program. Okay, what do you do in terms of uh, managing uh, information sharing, intelligence and so on? Well, definitely, Tony, uh, all the units, when they uh, become part of the program, the program is implemented by UNODC and our implementing part in the World Customs Organization. So we are not doing this by ourselves. We have uh, a key a role player that's the WCO uh, with us. They facilitate training, but they also facilitate access to a, a sec secure and encrypted platform that's called Containercom, where the port control units uh, worldwide between each other can share information on a, in a secure, encrypted, and a quick way. Uh, as you know, you know, DC, <clears throat> we are not a proper law enforcement agency, so we don't. Uh, operate intelligence, we don't operate information. Uh, we always leave that to the uh, local authorities. We will encourage them uh, to, to, to have that uh, correspondence between each other. And definitely we can also help them if, if they need to have uh, a direct contact in another country in the USA, in the country in Europe. We facilitate the contacts, you know, Europe or Interpol, bilateral contacts. We always uh, open doors for them, but we don't, uh, we never are part of those meetings. We never are part of, we don't need to have uh, proper uh, intelligence because we are not going to operate it. So we leave that uh, always to the local authorities, but we encourage them to, to, to collaborate between each other. And definitely if we try to open the doors, every door for them. Uh, for us, it's, it's it can be quite easy, you know, as you know, you see. Yeah. Uh, so, but the a key a, a, a key uh, uh, tool they have is definitely ContainerCom. ContainerCom is a, it's a quick and secure way of, of of sharing intelligence, and they use it. They and they see it also as a useful tool. Absolutely okay. Um, what successes can you tell us about? Well. Uh, the Caribbean belongs to the LAC region, Latin American Caribbean region. Uh, other colleagues of mine cover from Panama, the Latin America, Central America. And we have stats, uh, the, stat the statistic we, move, we, we have, we manage uh, about seizures, uh, we do it in the region. So I can say more or less, last year we closed the year with 130 tons of cocaine seized. Uh, up to this year, we are all already over the 130 tons in the LAC region. Uh, for the Caribbean region, of those 130 tons, we can speak about maybe we share, we, we see in the, in the Caribbean region 10 to 15 tons of cocaine, more or less on a yearly basis. But we do also uh, see a lot of IPR related goods. And definitely also in the last uh, one year, one and a half year, we are seizing a lot of. Uh, weapons that are being imported in, in the Caribbean, in, the, in, in, in Haiti, in, in Dominican Republic, in Jamaica, uh, coming, coming into the country. Not, not, they're not going out, they're not transshipped, it's it, 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 uh, imported. We have significant seizures of weapons in the Dominican Republic, weapons and ammunition, and we are speaking not uh, on guns, we are speaking on military weapons, so rifles, uh, Mil military military rep. So yeah, military uh, we have, we, yeah, we we have uh, some significant seizures. Okay. They are where, where, so, where are the source countries for, for these? Weapons? Well, the, the, the those weapons were were coming in containers uh, shipped from the United States into the into the Dominican Republic. Right, and 
and, and do you think this is a two-way traffic with the with the drug traffickers? They're using the same. Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. it's organized. Yeah, definitely, it's, it's organized crime. Uh, you see that the the, the tendency, eh? so the drugs goes out and the weapons come in with and the cash money. We have also uh, quite a lot of uh, seizures of uh, large amounts of, of cash money. We are speaking of two million dollars in one shipment not a, of 2.5 million dollars so you see definitely the the two way uh, the two way you know uh, when drugs goes out money yeah. and money is coming and one facilitates the other yeah but it's all related to organized crime definitely yeah excellent okay thank you for that that is very very interesting um appreciate it appreciate your time um and all that's left for me to say is thank you and thank you all out there for watching so uh, stay safe and goodbye. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to, uh, to explain uh, our job, our work. It's not, uh, sometimes it's not easy. It's uh, knocking a lot, of on, a lot on, on the doors. It's, it's also a lot of working and connecting and have confidence with the local authorities. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of work, but uh, I think we are, we are on the right path and we are helping to make a better and a, a secure more secure world thank, thank you. you absolutely thank you very much and we will no doubt uh, speak to you again sometime in the future to see how things are going thank you tony thank you for your opportunity Cheers. enjoy the rest of your day bye-bye